Coming up on Peninsula Beat, RPV TV recognized for their 10th Telly Award. The city of RPV is making our community even more beautiful. The LA Zoo joined forces with the Land Conservancy. We take you to the biggest party on the hill at the PV Street Fair. The Terranea Resort celebrates Dad on his special day. One RPV couple share their love for racing at the Long Beach Grand Prix. And we remember one of the most beloved places on the hill, Marineland. We start out with some good news to celebrate in our community as RPV TV has won its 10th National Tele Award. RPV TV was honored for a public service announcement called See Something, Say Something. The Tele Awards recognize excellence in local and regional television programs, video productions, and web commercials. Here's the award-winning public service announcement. Recently, there has been an increase of burglaries in our community. The Sheriff's Department and the Police Department are working hard to combat the problem and they would like you to get involved. If you see something, say something. If you see something out of the ordinary in your neighborhood, take pictures and call the police. Be on the lookout for unidentified vehicles or persons in your neighborhood and write down license plate numbers and vehicle descriptions so you can give accurate information to law enforcement. Get to know your neighbors and form a neighborhood watch. Let neighbors know when you're out of town so they can watch over your house. Remember to lock your doors even when you're home. Secure gates and backyard access at all times. Keep valuables out of sight and arm your home with an alarm. Never let strangers inside of your home. Request identification from people who claim they need to work on your house or say they're from the utilities company. If you see something, say something. Let's prevent crime together. For more information on crime prevention, go to the website, lamita.lasd.org. You may have noticed as you drive down or up Hawthorne Boulevard that dozens of trees are being planted in Rancho Palos Verdes in an effort to beautify the city. Liz Brown Swanson joins us with the details on this important public works project. Hi Maria, I'm here in Hawthorne Boulevard where there are crews working on a beautification project and this is one of many projects happening this year in our city. So what we're looking at right now, this is a project in construction and this is Hawthorne Beautification Project and this project's mainly about planting trees. So as you see behind me, we are excavating medians here. All the trees are going to be going in these uh, median planter boxes and we're going to have five types of trees. So depending on where you are on Hawthorne and Boulevard you'll see a different tree. We're going to start off uh, with some Brisbane box trees, very large trees, and as we make our way down uh, the trees will get progressively smaller. You know Hawthorne Boulevard is a really important gate gateway from the South Bay right straight down to the ocean and so it's been looking very tired. It's very much 1970s with some 1980s mixed in with it and uh, the, the council was really looking for some way to spruce it up before getting into a much larger project. Larger projects had been considered by the council in the last several years, but sometimes the weight of the costs sort of slows you down. So we came up with a real straightforward, replace the old junipers that were tired with brand new trees. And so this particular project is going to accomplish exactly that. Uh, we're going to have uh, several different sections of different size trees as appropriate because of being responsible with maintaining view shed, as well as a little extra twist of many of the, uh, many of the trees are going to be flowering trees, which is something we really don't have here in RPV. You'll see uh, we do have a lot of traffic control. If you're driving around Hawthorne uh, through these early summer months, you'll notice the delineators are up. Uh, this project is on schedule to be completed completed end of June, early July. Um, just something to keep in mind, even though it's a beautification project, you do know when they're planted, they come in as smaller trees. So we'll be able to see it becoming more and more beautiful as the years go on. All right, so when this beautification project wraps up, there'll be six dozen new trees lining Hawthorne Boulevard. I'm Liz Brown Swanson reporting for RPV TV. Remember to be cautious when driving on any of our streets when you see the orange cones on the road. 
The Los Angeles Zoo and the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy have joined forces to help clear the acacia branches and in turn use those branches to help feed the elephants, giraffes, antelopes, and other animals at the zoo. The acacia is removed as a part of the habitat restoration project and the zoo looks for the acacia branches for their food supply. Here's more from the PVP Land Conservancy's Executive Director, Andrea Vona. We're looking at areas that have had um, either um, invasions of, of um, invasive plant material or perhaps there's been different disturbances throughout time that could have been either um, through agriculture, maybe it was a military use, um, different things. Um, areas such as this they're, um, you know, that, that we're looking at here are all annuals, so everything is dead in the summertime. And what we're doing is um, planting the plants that are native to this area that live year-round um, and support a much higher diversity of plants of animals um, in the nature preserve and that adds the, to the resilience of the lands um, for being adaptable to drought, being adaptable to fire, being adaptable to um, erosion and other things. So we're here in Rancho Palos Verdes. We are at the Alta Vicente Reserve, which is just below the Rancho Palos Verdes City Hall. We are within the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve and we are at the site of um, a current habitat restoration project for the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy and the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. There are and were a few acacia shrubs on this site and um, the neat thing about the preparation for the site for planting and this project is that we were able to have the trimmings from the acacias um, given and picked up by the LA Zoo to help feed their elephants and giraffes and other grazing animals at the zoo and so it was it felt like a really great win-win to be able to offer this plant material which is um, sometimes hard for them to come by and labor-intensive and we needed to remove the, the shrubs anyway and so it was lovely to have the zookeeper Jeremy out here and helping to load up the truck for him and to send that off to the LA Zoo. Well we have at the Land Conservancy we have um, habitat restoration technicians we have staff members that help um, and this winter and early spring we were also really fortunate to have an AmeriCorps team with us a silver team that was here for 12 weeks which was um, comprised of young adults and they they really helped a lot on this project and we also rely on volunteers a lot. All of our volunteer opportunities are posted on the Land Conservancy's website which is pvplc.com Org, and we have a great online calendar as well as um, a site called Volunteer Hub where someone can register to become a volunteer. We have had um, a lot of high school students. Some of them have graduated from our um, into our team leader program and they help lead other volunteers. We've also have had um, scouts that are older um, in the sense of doing leadership awards and so we've worked with Eagle Scouts and Girl Scouts doing gold and silver awards and um, we have also had students in high school and um, college as well of course um, interested in doing research and so there have been some students that have worked on research questions related to local conservation and the preserves and several of them have even won um, science fair awards. And when we come back it was a ton of fun at the PVP Street Fair and Music Festival. Were you there? And an RPV couple share their passion for racing. We'll be right back. Hey guys, let's take a selfie. Yeah. Do you know all of your friends online? Would you trust them with your house keys? Post that on Instagram. Make sure to tag me. DM that to me on Twitter. Sure. When you post about your vacation, you're telling the online community that you're not home. Dude. What? Noelle's in Cabo right now. So? She has so much stuff at her house. How are we gonna get in? I know where she keeps her keys. Okay, dude, I'm down. The 29th annual Palos Verde Street Fair and Music Festival began with a little light rain, but that didn't stop a record number of people from coming out over the two-day event. I had a chance to catch up with the president and CEO of the Palos Verde Peninsula Chamber of Commerce, who talks about this year's event. 
We are so excited. We've really done a big push on social media this year. And um, of course, with all the help we get from RPV TV, the, the community is a buzz and we're just expecting a lot of people for a fabulous weekend. You know, we love coming here because it brings everybody in the community out and, and from all other yes. places. We meet people from everywhere. And this year, I think you've outdone yourself. The booths I'm noticing are very special, things you can't really find anywhere else. And it's pretty fun, Eileen. It is. We are very excited to have a lot of new artisans and crafters here this year um, and um, we'll be shopping later I think you and I yes I absolutely of mm -hmm. and of course the top dog show was, that's going on right behind us right now a huge event it was actually drizzling this morning when we came in but everybody came out with their dogs to participate absolutely because they have their costumes they're all ready so it's good to go and we were very excited to have the LA County's um, canine search and rescue here team here this morning as well you know I don't know how you guys do it because every year there's just there's more and more people that come and it, it's it's, it's fresh and it's new. How do you keep it that way? Well, you know, we are, it's, thank you for noticing that because there are obviously a lot of moving parts to putting on an event of this size. And we love to do it because it's a unique way to showcase our community. Um, and that's really what the Chamber of Commerce is all about is showcasing our community and our businesses. But we are, to answer your question, we have an incredible team of chamber member volunteers, as well as a very small but dedicated staff um, who work very, very hard for literally a year in advance to put on this street fair. We have two stages, as you know, of continuous live entertainment. The main stage, which has all the professional cover bands, and then today, as soon as the dog show ends, all afternoon and all day tomorrow, we'll be showcasing our community groups. So, the Amuse Singers, the kids from PVPA, Elite Dance Studio, um, just, you know, incredibly talented um, youth and adults from our community who will be performing. Well, that's kind of fun because we are in the promenade this year, more and more in the mall, which is always fun, and it's, it's really busy in here today. It is. It is busy. And if you go over to the Carnival, which is over at, on the Peninsula Shopping Center side, um, it was packed last night wall to wall with teenagers for Teen Night, which is a fundraiser for our local schools, as you know, and um, a great way for the kids to get together and just chill out with the start of summer and the end of school. We always have a good time at the street fair. The Terranea Resort is ready for one of the busiest days of the year, Father's Day. Hundreds of dads will enjoy great food, music, and play in Terranea's annual golf tournament. Liz Brown Swanson has more on the many Father's Day festivities happening at the resort. Terranea is becoming a Father's Day weekend tradition for more dads who come here to golf, to eat, enjoy music, and have fun with family. Father's Day at Nelson's is our busiest day of the year. Um, you know, there's just families and they're having a good time and everybody's just relaxed. It's a great atmosphere. Well, it's a wonderful day. We uh, always have a tournament on uh, Father's Day and Father's Day is actually the biggest golf day of the year in the golf business. It's the, the most crowded golf day. Um, and so we always hold our tournament. So this is our fifth annual team championship uh, that we're doing on Father's Day. It's a five man team event um, and you always get the Father's other shun pairs that are joining up or they've family in town so uh, people put a team together and come down and we have great food afterwards. Well, Father's Day is going to be a lot of different events in a lot of different places. Catalina Kitchen will have a full buffet for the dads to come and uh, just kind of enjoy a Sunday away from everything. Uh, Nelson's is going to have its Father's Day extravaganza with bands, uh, special specialty menus. Uh, same with Boshi and Marcel. So we're just ready to have all kinds of things going on for our guests. Uh, we will be doing our music on the meadows as well the Saturday before Father's Day. A uh, whole day of uh, different bands lined up. I think we have about five or six bands going from 12 to 7 in the afternoon. Uh, get a room for the night, have brunch the next morning. We've got the whole weekend covered for you. I brought out a lot of our uh, top sellers, our favorites. Um, we have our avocado dip over here. Um, we hand mash those avocados every day. Um, this is our chopped salmon salad with a blackened salmon. Our pretzel, which is the big favorite, our Bavarian giant pretzel. Um, with cheese sauce and beer mustard. And then of course the burger, everybody loves a good burger. Um, and it's great for dads. You, you'll be working Father's Day, you won't be with your dad, you said. Um, what makes your dad special? My dad is a little unconventional, uh, but he's very creative, he's a musician. And I think that's what he gave to me, was my creativity. Uh, having celebrated so many Father's Day for my father, I'm excited to really have my first official Father's Day. and. 
see what my son gets me, though I'm sure my wife will have something to do with it. My little ones are little. I have twins, five years old, and I have a three-year-old. So um, I've got a, a busy time being a dad work and, and balance. But um, I love to bring my kids out, and uh, they love to just wander around the golf course with me if I do play golf. Or, um, you know, I really enjoy taking them to the beach. But Taryn has a great uh, spot to walk trails. My wife will bring them down and walk the trails with them, and uh, it's a, a neat spot for them. Since you're a golfer, any fun? Uh, gift ideas. Always the standard, pol you know, polos, jackets, uh, the golf shirt is the typical dad, dad wear. So um, I think uh, a golf shirt's always a, a great gift. Uh, and uh, any golfer always needs golf balls. So that's always a, a good uh, gift topic. So. so you can see there'll be plenty of action here on Father's Day. And whether your dad golfs or not, coming here will definitely still be a big hit. Happy Father's Day, everyone. I'm Liz Brown Swanson reporting for RPV TV. And when we come back, one local couple celebrates over 20 years at the Long Beach Grand Prix, and it's time to share memories from one of the peninsula's favorite places. We'll be right back. So, uh, Malcolm, you do know that energy savers last six times longer than ordinary light bulbs. This isn't my room. It, it's, it's Baron Davis's. Baron Davis, the basketball player? This is his room? Yep. Interesting because we have Baron Davis right here. Baron, do you live here? No. I don't mean that, Baron Davis. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? And in sports, I caught up with an RPV couple at the Long Beach Grand Prix who have been attending this race for over 20 years. They began their love for racing when their company they worked for got them involved in going to the event. After the first race, they fell in love with the sport, attending races in Sonoma, Monterey, and even Indianapolis. Here's more of their story from the race. How long have you been coming to the Long Beach Grand Prix? Boy, since 1994. And what got you started in racing? We both work for American Honda, and that is the first year that Honda became a part of the series. So it was the love of supporting the company that we've worked for for so long. It is in our own backyard. To not support it, to me, because it's so local, it's such a fantastic venue. The weather, for the most part, we have the best weather. And it's just, uh, you can feel the love in the paddock. Everywhere that you come, this series is like a family. And that's what brought all of us together. So for us, we do feel like a part of this family. All right, over the years, you must have had some favorite drivers along the way. Tell us who some of your favorites are. Dario Franchitti, um, way back in the day, Alex Zanardi, um, Jimmy Vassar, um, Bobby, Parker Bobby Johnstone, Rahal. Parker yeah. Johnstone, yes. Mike Roth, Bobby Rahal. I mean, you know, uh, Alex Zanardi, in fact, oh, became... Great. Adrian Fernandez is real uh, good to us, but it's like Ruth was saying, everyone becomes family, yeah. and uh, we're here for the races, but we're here to see everyone, too. Yeah, I mean, it's yes. funny, because you walk around and you just run into people you constantly know just from meeting them over the years, too. The drivers have all been really, really cordial with us, and they are very grateful for the sponsorships and also for the engine, of course. Um, we... It, it, like I said, it's a family, and you become to know the drivers, you become very close to them. For us, because of the uh, loyalty that we've had to American Honda, he was a 42-year employee. I am a 43-year employee in June, and so for me, this Honda's been my life. So anything I can do to support it, I will, and this is one of the things that it allows me to come out again. It's my own time, but I enjoy doing it. And finally, one of the peninsula's most loved landmarks was Marine Land. And although the park has been closed for almost 30 years, there are many memories and stories to be shared. Here's John Clayton with a look back in our new series, The Magic of Marine Land. An amazing and unique tourist attraction used to exist on the Palos Verdes Peninsula, a landmark of special entertainment amidst the nature and natural beauty of Palos Verdes. Right here on the peninsula, there was once a home to a charming tourist venue called Marineland. Sadly, it has now faded into history, but it was for many employees the happiest and most joyful days of their life. And in this series, we'll fondly remember the magic of Marineland.
You had a very fascinating job, and that raises the question, how did you get your job at Marine Land? Well, that's an interesting question, John. I don't know if the answer is that interesting. <laughs> but I, I was working in radio, was, was fired, and was looking for a job. And I just came across the Vincent Thomas Bridge, followed the road down, saw the sky tower that Marine Land had, oh, yeah. and I pulled into it, and it said Hanna-Barbera's Marine Land. Well, I worked for Hanna-Barbera's Kings Island Amusement Park in Cincinnati, so I pulled in to see if there was something I could do. And I filled out an application, and, and the woman in personnel, we called it personnel in those days, not HR, <laughs> she said, do you know anything about uh, whales and dolphins? And I said, sure. <laughs> so I went right to the library and read up on pinniped cetaceans, got all the right words, yeah. came back for an interview, and was hired to operate sound. Oh, okay. So uh, I started as a sound operator from there, and then as I would make suggestions about shows and, and how their trainers would use their microphones and things like that, and we incorporated some new technology. I just sort of moved up a little bit into the ranks, and we brought in some other elements uh, for the guests, uh, costume characters, a clown band, uh, that kind of thing, and I just wound up as the director of entertainment. The idea was to show people what these animals naturally do in the environment in which they live, and people can't get out in the middle of the ocean or to the Arctic or wherever these animals uh, To the best exist. of your knowledge, they can't get out to the middle of the ocean. <laughs> That's true, to the best of my knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. So the idea was to bring the, that experience uh, to people, and eventually, and there was even a script at that point because there was a show agenda, if you will. Uh, and it, the behaviors turned into a storyline that we would still show the behaviors, the great things the animals do naturally out in the wild, and just kind of build a script around it. So of all the many months and years that you spent at Marine Land, there's got to be, and I hope there is, one really memorable thing that you will remember with very fond memories for the rest of your life. Well, aside from the friends that I've made and still have from Marine Land, the lasting memory for me would be from the very first time this kid from Cincinnati saw a killer whale come up out of the water to do what it did, to the very last time this now veteran of the Los Angeles area saw a killer whale come out of the water to do what it can do, the feeling was exactly the same. The power, the majesty, the magnificence of that creature, and every time in between. And still, when I see a picture from Marine Land, especially of Orchid coming out of the water, the feeling is exactly the same. That's the lasting memory that I have. It's the feeling of the majesty of what that place was. And that will do it for us. From all of us here at RPV-TV, make it a great day.